Hello everyone, this is Fady from Heartbeat Productions. Welcome back. And today, I wanna to do a follow-up video continuing to talk about the comparison between the microphones L22 by Townsend that is owned right now by Universal Audio and the Slate ML1. They're both mic modeling microphones. Uh, after the first video I did about them, I've had so many uh, comments on YouTube as well as on my DMs on Instagram. A lot of people said, hey, can you please show us samples? We wanna to listen to the difference between those mics. Are they worth it? Are they not worth it? Obviously there is a big difference in price between both, but there's also different features of each one of them. And also there was a lot of questions about how do you route it in your DAW? How do you run it? How do you record? And what system do you use um, for all of this? So today we'll be covering all of that. We'll be covering um, how do I route it in my DAW, through my interface, through my setup. Also, I'm gonna be playing back some samples for you guys. Um, I was able to capture some through a grand piano, through an upright piano, through acoustic guitar, and then through a male and a female vocal. That way, I was trying to cover as much as I can. Um, and then we'll sample both, we'll listen to both, and then we'll see the difference between uh, both and between both plugins and the different tone between both plugins. Make sure you stay until the end of the video. Uh, if you're deciding which one do you like more, uh, make sure you comment in YouTube as well. Also, I'm going to be putting in the comments below, there's going to be Dropbox links to the sample audio files so that way you can listen to them in high quality versus YouTube without any compression or anything so that way you know what you get for all of it. All right, let's dig in. All right, so as you see on my screen right now, so I want to start first uh, with routing. So you'll see here on my screen, I have one named L22 and I have one named ML1. And then you'll notice that the L22 is using ch channel analog channel one and two, but the ML1 is only using analog three. And that's what we've talked about in the previous video, the L22, it records in stereo and you always have to record in stereo. That's one of the big things about the L22. It captures both capsules front and back. Whether the source that you're wanting to record is mono or stereo, you still have to capture it in your interface as stereo. My interface, I'm using Apollo X8P. Uh, and you guys can see it in here, I have eight pre's. So they're both running through the same exact preamp. They're both obviously take phantom powered up here and they're both running at the same exact gain. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now the second thing, when you use this, do not use any of Unison from Apollo. That will color the sound and you do not wanna be doing this. That will mess up with all of your mic modeling software and it just it will color it before it hit the software that is supposed to color it and then you don't get any accurate results that way. So people who ask me, okay, how do we monitor this in our ears? All right, so let's talk about the difference between both. For the L22, you have two options in here because this is, let's say we're gonna record mono right now. You're recording a vocalist, a singer, and then that singer wants to obviously hear themselves back in their ears really well, uh, was a good quality. That's the advantage of the L22, especially, well, not especially, only if you're using the Apollo console and if you have an Apollo interface. So right here, I will go not in my unison, I'll go in my inserts and I'll actually go into my microphone and then if I'm recording in mono, so the mic is turned this way, um, if I'm recording in mono and the mic is turned where you're only recording at the front capsule of the mic, then you're gonna use the Townsend lap sphere. But then if you're recording in stereo mode of the microphone, then you're gonna use the 180 plugin. So right now, let's kinda show both of them. So this is I'm recording in mono. Um, and right now you're gonna choose whatever mic you want this to simulate. And here's like a whole bunch of them. And then right here you're choosing the polar pattern of the mic and then the filter, which is the low cuts basically at 60 Hertz, 100, 200, off axis, on axis proximity, which is how close you are to the mic and how far you are back from the microphone. Um, and then 
We're going to close this window really quick. Then all of that right now, up here was that blue dot. You can tell Apollo this is only for monitoring reason. So the uh, artist is hearing that back in their ears, but when it hits the DAW, it's not printing any of that. And if you turn it into red, that puts the console in record mode, which means it will print that plugin. So now when it hits your DAW, this is it. You cannot go back and change what mic you wanted to use or what options for that mic. This is how you would monitor from your DAW, I'm sorry, from your console to your artist before you hit your DAW for the Townsend L22. The advantage of that is that you can, let's say we're not gonna print it right now, is that you can actually choose what mic. So you're monitoring with even choosing different mics. So it gives you a little bit more versatility versus the ML1, you only have phantom power, the mic is on, which is the mic is in its like purest flat response form at that point, but you're not able to monitor in zero latency back in their ears what they're hearing. And if you wanna do this from inside your DAW, especially if you have a big session, obviously there will be some latency. And if you have a lot of plugins in this session uh, on all your instruments and everything, then it will be a lot of latency. So this is one of like the drawbacks of the ML1 that you cannot monitor back in their ears with all the mic emulations and which mic they wanna to listen to back in their ears. Um, okay, so this is how I would record. Um, now, a lot of people asked in the previous video, okay, do you process before or after? How do you run through your outboard gear? Uh, normally, so this is how I prefer to do it. I keep it on monitor and not print. That way I have full flexibility in post to change it, especially if I'm mixing a song. I would like to that voice to be a little bit brighter. Instead of actually putting an EQ, I would choose a different microphone. And then for the artist purpose, I would go in here and put a preamp. So I'll put a, ten, um, let's say, 1073 uh, or grab from here, Neve 1073. So this is my pre right now. And then, so you have your mic, which preamp, and then I can put here like an EQ and a compressor or something like that. So that way they have really nice, punchy, amazing vocals in their ear. And I'll send to an auxiliary for reverb as well. Here is my auxes. I'll put a reverb and I'll send to auxiliary one for some reverb in their ears. And if even when I'm using the ML1, uh, I would also put in here uh, an EQ and a compressor or something, or even a 1073, only on monitor, not on record. So that way they still have really good quality in their ears that they're hearing. And then after I put this in my DAW, and after I choose what mic I want it to be or to sound like, then I would uh, process them. And if I wanna run it through outboard gear, I'll take an insert from my DAW back to my outboard gears in a return back to be printed into the DAW and process it that way, which I'll talk about that in a different video. Okay, so let's now say uh, we did this, we put the sphere and then put whatever you wanna put afterwards just for the monitoring reason. And then now you're good to go. Now let's go to the DAW. I use Pro Tools. Um, so you guys will follow here on Pro Tools and there's all the samples that I've created for everything. So right now, so let's go upright piano. So this is an upright piano uh, that I recorded the L22 and then the ML1. And you can notice that in Pro Tools, I'm creating a stereo track for the L22, but I'm creating a mono track for the ML1. I'm using the normal Sphere plugin, not the Sphere 180. And that's because I'm recording the, the mic in a mono mode in front of the piano. And uh, you guys can see and in the video right here, how I'm showing uh, both mics and how they're facing the piano. I try to put them right in the center of the piano so that way I can get really close sound for both of them. For right here, I went with the standard right now. So we're simulating the 47, which is the Neumann U47. Uh, if you get your hands on one of those, it's normally around $20,000. And they don't make, like especially the original ones, they don't make them anymore. Um, so those are really expensive microphones. And then I'm using right now just a straight cardioid pattern. I'm not using any filters, which is the low cuts. That way I wanna keep it 
exactly the same as the slate. Axis is at zero, zero proximity effect. Um, this is also one of really cool feature that the sphere has. It's called isosphere, which is basically you can add in here as if you were using some form of a shield, including even a vocal booth. I played with this a little bit and I tried it and in my honest opinion, I don't like it at all. And I'll show you guys some samples with it on the vocals. Uh, it kind of messed up with the tone of the mic significantly more than I would like it to be. I would rather just track in a clean room and my room is completely dead and treated. So that way I don't, it's not completely dead, but it's very well treated, uh, my tracking room. So I don't necessarily have to do this, but I'll show you guys samples with and without it. So that way you get an idea. All right, so here's the sphere. I'm gonna leave this open so you guys can see it. And then here's the slate. And in the slate, you would, when you do this, you would put the slate mic first. And then from in here, you choose which mics. So we're using the 47 to be at the same. And then normally when you process in the slate after the mic, you will go into your pre's and then you will choose which preamp you want to use like that first one the fg73 that's the simulation of this uh, uh, neve 1073 so you would just put that after the microphone so you guys can see here uh it's pretty straightforward obviously on the slate plugin you really don't have any controls except for emulating that one specific mic and this is it but for the rest I'm sorry for the sphere you can control a whole lot more you have a lot more features to control okay let's go to samples right here so here's the two that we will be comparing right now so the first sample I did right here was just playing a C chord and an F chord and let it ring so that way I can get the tone uh, and then just hear the tone to its fullest. So here you go. Uh, top one is the L22, bottom one is the ML1. super close especially when I played that chord the way I did it and the just kind of like the the tone of everything they're very very close I used here the um, fat filter EQ uh, I'm not applying any EQ but I'm using this so we can actually see comparison between both in here and then you guys can see um, the gray color is the um, L22 and the red color will be the ML1. You can see how close they are even as just frequency analyzer. Super close, just very, very minor differences between them. You can see up here past the 5K the gray, which is the L22, is actually slightly brighter than the slate. And we'll, you'll notice that more on vocals once we head to the vocals. Okay, when I go play uh, up high, so here's some samples, and I'll give you guys samples for the entire piano track in here. That way you have both. All right, so here's the L22. Now you actually can tell the difference. There's a lot more going on. Now that, um, in my opinion, and uh, some people might disagree with me, the L22 is cleaner. The mids on the L22 are cleaner and the highs are more crisp. And they're more, uh, just they're slightly brighter and it cuts through much better and it doesn't have that um, kind of muddy mid-range. 
Um, I'll play it one more time and then I will have the EQ so you guys can see both. Here's the L22. So you can tell the mic response has changed and how it's capturing the sound based on what I'm playing. When I played just a simple chord, they were very similar. When I played this pattern, it actually, they were not similar. I personally prefer the L22 here than the Slate. The L22 is a lot cleaner to me and it punches. I would actually, um, with that Slate, I would probably put some EQ on it to clean up some of the mids and then I will boost a little bit of the highs. Um, can you get it done with an EQ? Probably, but I'm always like a purist form in terms of I want to capture my source at its highest quality and I don't want to worry about that. Um, okay, let's go here. I think I played some really high notes so you can hear those starting with the L22. Now it's the slate. So interesting because I kind of like this slate here more. I guess because I went really up high and this slate sounds slightly darker, then it made me feel like, okay, I like this slate here more because it's not as bright compared to the L22. So play it one more time. Here's the L22. And you can see it clearly on the Pro-Q uh, right past the 7 or 8K mark all the way down to 20K that the L22 is slightly brighter than the Slate. All right, so let's kind of move on here and let's grab acoustic guitar. Um, so I'm still comparing between U47, 47, 47. That way we get equal exact between both. They're, they're both in cardioid patterns and there is no other features being applied. Okay, so the first here I just had um, my friend Jordan here. He just played a down strum. And then we comparing both in a down strum, similar to what I did with the piano. So here is this, uh, the L22 first. Slate. Super similar. All right, then here we did a picking pattern. So let's try that. Going to the ML. significant difference. It's actually even more noticeable on the acoustic than the piano, especially because those high notes that he was picking, they're a lot brighter. And so you can tell now the difference how these mics are responding in the high frequencies where the L22 is so much cleaner in the highs and is slightly brighter and cleaner in the mids, while the slate is slightly warmer in the highs, less bright, but it's also more muddy in the mids, and I'll have to EQ that a, whole, a lot more. Play it one more time here. Significant difference. Um, okay, let's go to this. We did this pattern right here so you guys can hear the difference. significant difference in the mid-range specifically here I'm hearing a lot more mids on the slate versus the L22. 
I want to try something and see if that makes any difference. So I read this where the intensity when you boost that, the mic responds slightly different. So I want to, uh, so I'm pushing the intensity right now to 150 on the slate mic and let's try it with that. All right, so here's the L22. I would say still, even with the intensity being pushed all the way to 150, the L22 is still kind of showing the same as what we saw in the previous ones. Um, and here's just guitar strumming. So you guys can judge that for yourself as well. Okay, so we tracked the same guitar, and now this is not gonna be a fair uh, comparison, but this is also one of the advantages of the L22. So I turned the mic 180 degrees to record it in stereo mode, and now you can see the difference. I'm using the Sphere 180 plugin instead of the normal Sphere plugin. Um, and then I'm able to capture that guitar in stereo. So let's talk about this uh, just really quick right here. And this is one of the amazing things that I absolutely love about the L22. So patterns, I'm keeping them the same, which is the cardioid pattern. Um, filter, I'm turning it off. And then centered. And then the width, I'm keeping it at 100% right now. And I'll show you guys the difference in a, just a minute in here. So you can click that link and unlink. When it's linked, it's changing, it's keeping both mics exactly the same. When I change this polar pattern, changes on both mics, which is the left and the right. If I change the mics, it also changed them on both. If I unlink this, I can now have an unmatching stereo pair where I'm having my left side is uh, a Neumann 47 in a cardioid pattern, and then my right side is a Neumann 49 in a cardio pattern or in a subcardioid or a supercardioid, uh, so whatever you want. And that would, it's really cool to be able to do this for specific things depending on your need. Um, so let's kind of match it right now. So here's matched, and this is at 100. Uh, so let's pick that uh, last, this pattern right here. versus the slate, which is in mono. That's why I said it's not a fair comparison, but you're also capturing this with one mic versus having to set up two mics. Obviously the difference is very clear and very obvious. Um, and then uh, since we got to this point. I want to show you guys that a couple things here in the stereo mode for this mic that is amazing. Uh, the width. So I'm going to mess around with the width as you're listening and I'm going to start with a really, really narrow at zero and then all the way up to 200. It's really impressive. You're, uh, you can see how it's almost like somebody is physically grabbing those two mics and moving them away from each other. And then I'm gonna um, unlink this and I'm gonna use 47 on one side and then I'm going to use uh, a C12 on the other side. I like those on acoustic guitar a lot, which I believe if you own like the original version of a C12, you're looking at a, almost 12 grand to buy one. Um, okay, so here we go. Both are cardioid patterns. And then uh, here's a sample.
can actually tell right now when I switch back to the 47, the stereo image when I was using the C12 is wider because you have a mismatching left and right. And normally when your left is slightly different than your right, it makes you feel like the stereo image is a slightly wider in tone. And when they were matching, uh, it was slightly narrower in um, stereo image, which is one of the, again, great things about this. I was able to capture all of this just using one microphone. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, let's continue moving on and I will address the polar patterns in just a second. All right, so here is um, a male U47, and then the slate is also the 47. So they're both at the same. And here's my friend Jordan, again, singing. So let's listen to the difference. I studied your shape, baby, I traced you. So don't fear all the lies, cause I won't erase you. I studied your shape, baby, I traced you. So don't fear all the lies, cause I won't erase you. I so back again to the same things we've noticed. It is slightly different, especially in the mids now on his vocals. I'm noticing the mids more where I kind of like the sphere honestly here more because they're cleaner in the mids on his vocals than uh, the ML1. Um, let's grab another sample from back here. And then um, here's a go, uh, L22 first and then the ML1. Baby, I think you and I are going places. Baby, I think you and I are going places. Slightly closer than the previous one. Let's play it one more time. Baby, I think you and I are going places. Baby, I think you and I are going places. Definitely the L22 in that take, slightly brighter than the ML1. When he started singing a little louder, the mids weren't bothering me as much on the slate, but the highs are definitely crisp more crisp on the L22. Um, let's grab the female, and this is our friend Sasha here, uh, Jordan's wife, and um, same thing, we're still using the 47 on both of them. Let's change the world and save it with our love. Let's change the world and save it with our love. Now on a female vocal, the difference is more noticeable than a male vocal. I'm going to play it one more time here. Let's change the world and save it with our love. Let's change the world and save it with our love. And so you can see the difference in here. Um, again, I find my ears more leaning toward the L22 than the Slate for those reasons. Um, by the way, this is not a paid um, video from neither one of the companies. I own two, two of the Slate mics and I own the L22 and uh, this is to help a lot of people just make um, their decision about it and uh, what they want to do for themselves. So you get to decide and you'll have all these samples and you get to decide for yourself. Um, since we are on the female vocal, I want to show you guys something. If I go here and change polar pattern, it'll actually significantly change the tone. Uh, so here's the cardioid. Here's the cardioid. Let's change the world. 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 So you can see the difference in here. 
I just did that as a quick sample so you guys can hear the difference between different polar patterns. Uh, the filter, this is just a basic low cut, so there isn't really much to show. I'm going to show you guys the axis as I'm moving the axis. So basically, it's almost like when you're singing, you're singing off the mic, and then you can move it all the way up to 180 degrees. Let's change the world. Here's at a 90 degree from the mic. Let's change the world. Here's at 180 degrees. Let's change the world. Um, I normally never use the axis, barely even had to. Uh, it's helpful if you have a singer singing off the mic and you want to fix that, um, or a guitar and he turned a little bit while he's tracking, so he's slightly off axis, so you're adjusting that in post, which is another couple of the really cool features that uh, are only present with the sphere. And then, like I said, I'm going to show you guys this. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to show you just, you get an idea. So I tracked my vocals in my room, which the room is super clean and uh, doesn't have any echoes in it. I have panels everywhere, ceiling and sides. And um, now if I use this reflection filter and then I in, I'm going to play it back a uh, bypass first and I'm going to uh, enable it right after. Let's change the world. Let's change the world. And I'm gonna. Let's change the world. 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 By passing. Let's change the world. Let's change the world. It really messes a little bit with the tone. And um, I don't know. I I like capturing the this in a really clean room without having to use this in post. And I highly recommend you guys do this as well. Let's change the world. Let's change the world. It almost like, like especially in that vocal booth uh, filter, it almost like muffled the sound a little bit. Um, I'm not a big fan of it. But anyways, um, now, um, like many of you have asked, okay, so what do you do um, after this? Uh, basically, here's my sphere. And then second to the sphere, I'm going to choose what mic pre I want to run it through. If I'm using a plugin, I'm just going to open from here. And let's say if I grab the Neve 1073, here's the, U, the one by UA. Or if I am going to run it through a real uh, mic pre, I can just basically uh, grab from here an IO and grab an insert and then run through my patch bay, a round trip through something. Um, I know that some of you guys asked about mono versus stereo. Do I need two mic pre's for this or not? Obviously, if you use the plugin, it doesn't really matter. And then if I right click on this, so if you want to run it through a mic pre and you want to run only one channel, which I understand because you don't have Two 1073 sitting in your studio and you're going to run left and right and match them. So basically commit this. So I would right click, I would commit up to this insert. And I'm going to leave, do nothing. So just to leave. Okay, so here's the committed file. It's that one. And then I would go on Pro Tools and I would say split to mono, which it would split it to mono, and then I'll delete the stereo committed file. And then I'll delete one of the monos, doesn't matter which one. So I'm going to get rid of the right one here. And then now you have a committed mono track of this. Let's change. Oh, this is pan to the left. Here you go. Let's change the world. And then just process that. Uh, as a normal mono and then take it and do whatever you want to do with it. Um, 
versus it's audit, uh, run it through a pre hardware pre or a, or a plugin insert or whatever. And then for this slate, I'm gonna do the same. So if you use their pre's, you just put it right after the mic. Or if you don't wanna use their pre's, you can use any other pre as just an insert in here. Or if you wanna run it, the slate is a little easier but since it's already mono, then you just grab it and send it through um, a hardware plugin. It's so just the one channel and just process it. I normally, uh, in scenarios like this, I would run a Pro Tools insert uh, from here, from the IO, which I'll make a separate video about patch bay and how I'm running that. And then I'll process this mic as if I'm analog processing uh, a normal vocal chain. So I'll run it normally through my either the 4710 or the 1073, and then I'll take that into my API compressor and then for a fast attack compressor, and then I'll take it back into my 2A for a slower attack compressor, and then I normally end up putting an EQ from the pull tech, and sometimes I put also tape saturation from the Neve tapes. Um, and then um, I'll do a completely separate video on vocal chain and we'll do a process for my vocal chain and what's my favorite and what's not. But uh, for today, uh, this is just a, a really quick, uh, simple, just talking through this, talking through um, what is it, the difference between both with samples. Again, you guys can download the samples. I'll put them in a the Dropbox in the comments uh, in the descri video description below. So that way, make sure you download them so you can listen to also the samples in uh, high quality. I hope this really helped you. Uh, if you really like this video, make sure to subscribe and uh, I will see you in the next video.